But first, with worries about rising fuel prices and expanding waistlines, more and more people are getting on their bikes. Yeah, bad cyclists can be the bane of motorists' lives, but some drivers can make cycling absolute hell behind the handlebars. Simon Bozeman looks at how some lycra-clad crusaders are literally oozing their heads to fight back. As a cyclist, the ignorant drivers really get up your nose, but does sharing the road with cyclists really make your blood boil? The battle between cyclists and motorists is an old one, but now those on two wheels have come up with an effective way to fight back at their four-wheeled enemies. Now cyclists have been putting cameras on their bikes and on their helmets, all to capture drivers' bad behaviour, and then they're naming and shaming those drivers by putting the videos on the internet. Take a look at this close encounter with a fuel tanker captured via a camera attached to the helmet. <laughs> Motorists pay attention. Here's an example of what not to do at a mini roundabout. <laughs> so, as you can see, this kind of footage can provide compelling evidence when things go wrong. Barrister and avid cyclist Martin Porter is no stranger to the problems faced on the roads. He started wearing a camera a year ago. In this clip, an angry motorist actually says he wants to kill him. It's unnerving. I mean, one might say, well, you can't possibly have meant it. But cyclists do get killed by motorists. Because obviously my word against any motorist is not really going to account for anything. I'd on the few occasions in the past that I tried reporting bad behaviour to the police, so it came down to one word against another, then obviously, understandably, proceedings that no real action could be, could be taken. But where there's some corroborative evidence in the form of a video, then that's potentially quite compelling. We asked Martin to look at some other clips from cyclists that have been posted online. So that's a terrible piece of driving. That's what cyclists call the left hook when a vehicle comes past you and immediately turns left into your path. And it happens all too often. So that was incredibly close, incredibly dangerous. I can't think why that driver didn't just let the cyclist clear the junction and then do his left turn. Oh, you idiot! Yeah, that was really close to him. Has that happened okay. to you? That happens an awful lot. That's the... Um, right turning vehicle coming out of a side road straight into your path. It's complete thoughtlessness. Increasingly, cyclists are posting this sort of footage on their own websites or on sites used by other cyclists. They hope that a bit of naming and shaming will improve driver standards and educate errant motorists. <laughs> Nick Chalmers of the Metropolitan Police is involved in the scheme Road Safe London. The scheme invites the public to send them information on incidents of bad driving, which can include video evidence. We get information uh, which on its own is not enough to mount a prosecution and it's probably not always appropriate to mount a prosecution. But a lot of the time people's driving, they're not aware that what they're doing is dangerous. Um, we write to people to do just that, to raise awareness. We make it clear that this is aimed at making the road safer. Cyclists say the process lacks consistency, with some cases taken up by the police and some not. But occasionally the footage can lead to a prosecution. In this example, the coach driver decides at the last minute that he's in the wrong lane. He veers to the right, nearly wiping out two cyclists. We received some information which included evidence in the form of uh, video recording from a head cam on a cyclist. The driver saw the footage, that was part of the evidence in, in the, the court case and he pleaded guilty. But of course, not everyone on two wheels is an angel, as this footage shows. The difference is, when they're caught on camera doing something naughty, there's no number plate for the police to take action. So my problem with cyclists is that when you, you, know, you can be driving down the road, and they just end up, you know, they can carve you up. Uh, when you're setting parts at a red light, they can just come whizzing past you, you're about to set off, and you can nearly take one off his bike, so it can be a nightmare at times. They really are causing a danger when they go through red lights and go on to swerve onto the footpath. Motorists, you have to stop at red lights. Traffic cyclists these days just don't stop, they just go straight through. And uh, every time I'm there, it just drives me up the wall, I have to say. Now, I must confess, I came into this thinking more as a motorist than anything else, but after spending a couple of miles in someone else's shoes, 
you can see there's probably blame to be attached on both sides here. Incredible footage, Wasn't that. Wasn't it just? Doesn't often make you feel like you're riding those bikes, makes you think. <laughs> I'd be hopeless on the road. Yeah. But, but Griff, you're a cyclist turned motorist, so you've seen the road from both sides of the saddle, haven't you? I guess I'm a motorist turned cyclist turned motorist. Okay, so who side are you the on? Same. Oh, but I used to ride to my office, uh, and it was all through central London, and every time I got in there, got to work, I would get down on my knees and thank God <laughs> for having preserved me for another day's work. I just felt that <laughs> was the most, about the most dangerous thing I could do in my life was to ride through. And I think there are a few things we could sort out. I, because there are a lot, round where I live, I mean, I'm right in the middle of town now, uh, so I've got the best solution to everything, which is I, d I don't ride, I don't drive, I just walk everywhere. But, the, um, but th there are a lot of cycle lanes, and people don't go in the cycle lanes. Mm. Yeah. Uh, and I'm not quite sure why. I, d I think the cycle lanes are inconvenient, or they don't go in the right directions. Yeah. So a lot of cycle lanes are completely empty, and then there's a sort of fight, war going on between the cyclists. Well, let's hope that everybody calms down eventually and finds a way of living together without but murdering each other one way or another. <laughs> in harmony, that's what we want. Yeah. Lovely. See, I think we've we sorted that one out. Perfect. <laughs>